Hi guys. So I want to talk to you about Ableton's hidden options today. All right, so the way you get these options is through a file called options.txt and where it is on PC is here, right? So uh, C users, your username, app data, roaming, Ableton Live, your version of Live, and then preferences, and then you'll have a bunch of stuff in here, but specifically we're talking about this file. Now, if you haven't done this, you probably don't even have this file, so you just have to make a file uh, called options.txt. I'll make mine available to you guys in the description. All right, but let's, let's check this out. So there's a few options, um, and a couple of them are really useful. All right, so the show device slots button, that one's nice, but uh, basically what that does is if you have devices, right, so you've got a bunch of stuff, right, if we go to view and we do show device slots, this, this will only show up if you've got this option enabled in your options.txt file. When you do that, you can see this pop up and not really, oh, because it's over here, right, so you can see these guys, right, and they correspond to these. So uh, normally it tells you the name of the device. I'm not really sure why it's not. Oh, there you go. This needs to be longer. And so, you know, you've got this auto filter. You've got this cabinet, the Dynamics tube. You can turn them on and off here. But also if you click on them here, it will highlight there. So if you've got these big, long signal chains, it can actually be easier to um, find things and turn them on and off with this device slot option. Right. So another option is enable map to siblings. This one's extremely useful. Right. So if you're setting up macros, right, uh, say we group these together. What it is is if you have multiple chains, right, and say I'm setting up these macros and I want to turn up the drive on this filter on macro one, well, say I want to do that on every chain, right, and I want the same mapping. Right, even if I change some details about this mapping, right, say I want it to go from there to there, right, and this is what I'm trying to do for this mapping, you can see down here it's changing just fine, but it's not going to do anything on the other change or chains. But if I right click, I can map to all siblings, right? This doesn't show up unless you have that enabled. So now when I do that, all these other chains have the same mapping going on, right? And you can see got these three copies of this mapping. So that's really, really useful. Um, I'm going to release a video, maybe even today, but pretty soon on uh, what I call loop 128s. And you make it with 128 loop chains down here. And in order to get all the macro mapping set up, you need this enabled, right? So uh, this, this lets you do more work quicker, right? Build more powerful tools where you'd normally you'd have to go and do the mapping individually for all these different chains. Not anymore. You can just do map to all siblings, right? So that one's really, really useful. Um, this one's about if you have VST plugins, it will auto populate their parameters for you. Um, you know, so say you've got like, I don't know, ProQ or something like that, right? Uh, these parameters over here will get, if you have it on, will get populated for you, right? Um, so I, it should have done that like all 32, but I think only certain ones will actually like automatically have 32 of these sliders. I, mean, I, I chose 32, but you can do apparently up to 128. Um, this one's about automation lanes, and if you're drawing in automation lanes, right, like uh, just as a quick example, if we had some lane, right, we had some, or some clip with some automation, and we were mapping in pitch bend like this, or better yet, you know, like this, right, what it will do is it will, the lower you have that, it will create straight lines for you, uh, right, so the higher you have this, more or yeah fewer breakpoints are being created so if i had this at one this would probably have just been a straight line right you know like something like uh let me just clear that out but it would have looked more like this where it wouldn't have had all those bait points and it would have just interpreted what i had drawn right so that's basically what that does is it it draws fewer breakpoints for you which may or may not be desirable 
Um, this one helps start up faster. Uh, I always scan my VSTs manually, so if you go to your um, files and folders, you can rescan your VSTs. Right? Normally, Ableton will scan your VSTs for changes when it starts up. That takes extra time, so I have this option enabled uh, in order to not scan. And just uh, really quick, if it's got a slash in front of it, that comments this out, which if you don't know, um, like, you know, programmer talk, it basically means that it's going to ignore this whole line. So if you want to enable an option, you just delete that. If you want to disable an option, you have a slash there. All right. Um, I think that this helps. Uh, there's a handful of things like if you're if you've got like your MIDI keyboard on and stuff, it'll make sure that it will Ableton will listen to stuff first and then it'll send those messages to your VST plugins. Otherwise, the VST plugins are going to listen for what your keyboard strokes are and it's going to interpret them in its own framework, um, which may or may not be desirable. Uh, so, you know, th this can be useful. I have mine off because I want to make sure that my VST plugins get the keystrokes that I want. Um, Rewire Master. Uh, Rewire is a system built by Propellerhead, but basically it lets outside programs send MIDI and audio to and from Ableton. And it's nice because you can get um, VST, like things that aren't technically VSTs, you can get them to behave kind of like VST plugins. Right? You have this separate program running, but it still talks and sends the audio and the MIDI and stuff to and from Ableton, and so you're able to do say it's a sound design program like Wave Warper or something that's not um, a VST plugin, you can still have it send the sounds it creates directly to Ableton. All right. Uh, so that's what it is. Ableton is normally in charge of you know the the clock and all that stuff, and uh, this lets other programs be in charge. Uh, the next one is how many rewire channels. So those are channels over which you can send and receive audio and MIDI through this rewire system. Uh, I set mine to 16. You can reduce it to reduce the amount of overhead and like make Ableton a little bit less resource intensive, but I, I don't really know how much that helps. So I have mine at 16 just in case I want to use it, uh, but low enough that it's not going to have too much overhead. Um, this, if you have APC 40s or anything like that, you're, you're familiar with these little red boxes that show up. This will let you control them independently as opposed to them being linked. Um, absolute mouse mode is actually deprecated in Live 10. Now it's called pen and tablet mode, but it helps you use touchscreen monitors. Um, but it makes it so you can't hold shift to find adjust parameters, so it's not very good. So I keep mine off. Uh, strict delay compensation, I believe that this will add latency um, if you force the delay compensation, but um, I'm not really sure what the benefits of this are. Right, but it's going to make things even if you're not monitoring them, it's going to like delay certain tracks that need to be delayed to get everything in alignment, um, which you know normally what happens when you're listening to stuff. But if you're not listening to stuff, I think it doesn't do that. Uh, but this will force it to do that, even if like the track's not playing or something like that. Um, relax file manager search. Uh, I sometimes have this off because it will like replace missing files. So if you're trying to replace miss or fi media files are missing, if you move them and you're doing a search, it'll replace them faster. Um, but it's not going to check to make sure that it's really the right one because it's going to do it by file name, but it's not going to do it by the file contents. That's what this checksum is. is it's basically checking the bits to make sure that they look the way that they're supposed to and that it really is the same file as was originally supposed to be there, right? Um, these two, this is arm on selection. So with this off, every time you click on a track, it's going to record, like arm the record button down here, uh, which can be really nice. Like if you're if you're writing stuff and you're recording like a bunch of, if you're tracking, you know, a bunch of parts, it, it's it's nice because every time you click, it's already recording for you. But it's it's less nice, you know, when you're mixing down stuff and otherwise might not want the record button enabled automatically. Um, and then this is similar, but when you create new tracks. This last one is a fix, right? So in Ableton Live 10.3, um, a lot of people's systems were sh slowing down and performing terrible. And uh, by having this, it fixes that. I'm not exactly sure how, but it's something to do with the graphics backend, um, like some video card thing. And so 
putting that in will fix that problem. So if you have a really, really poor performing Ableton, then this might just make your Ableton performance way better. So um, that's all I wanted to show you guys is just there's these hidden options. Um, this enable map to siblings, I use this all the time when building tools. Um, I'm going to show you a video in which I use it uh, to create these loop 128s. But yeah, check it out. Um, you can read about this on Ableton's website. And um, again, it's in your this PC C drive or wherever you have an, um, your main user library or the main users folder installed. Uh, Asus, App Data, Roaming, Ableton, Live 10.0.5, Preferences. I'll put where it's located on Mac in the description. I just got to look it up. I don't have a Mac. So, but I'll, I'll leave that location for you guys. All right. Thanks so much and take care and enjoy this. Bye.